Hey everybody, this is John from Alpine Archery and Fly. Uh, we are doing our second installment of uh, fly tying videos. And today, for this one, I wanted to show you guys one of the most universally effective patterns, whether it be for trout, steelhead, salmon. I know it's used in Alaska, British Columbia. We use it down here a lot. Uh, this is a great fly. Again, you can do it in a ton of different color combinations. And this one, you can bang out quick and you can make a whole bunch of them at the same time. And it's not gonna take very long. So, um, when I'm tying these at home, they're five minutes. If, if I got everything set out, they'd take five minutes. And so what we're gonna do today is we got, I'm gonna show you one of my color combinations. And this is, we're using micro pulsator rabbit strips. And this is black and olive. And then for the belly of the fly, uh, we're gonna use barred orange and yellow. So that's really all there is as far as materials go to this fly. Um, traditionally, this fly is tied on um, a trailer hook and then it's got another shank hook that they trim the hook off of. I don't like trimming the hooks off of hooks. Uh, I'd rather tie on a shank myself. So we're using the OPST shank. So I'm using the steelhead shank. Um, I use one of the shorter ones. So um, that's what we got. I really like these. And then I'm using an OPST swing hook as well and an OPST intruder wire and then just a cone head. So let's get started with this. I'll show you how I rig it up and we'll get going. So just take some intruder wire um, you know, whatever length, um, and you can just adjust from there. I like using dikes to cut it off. It doesn't dull my scissors. So what we're going to do, I got my intruder wire there. Now I'm going to build up thread base on here, get that cone out of the way. I always hate cones cause they move on me and then they slide down and I hate that, but, uh, we'll get used to it. And I just want a good thread base for when I put the um, wire down, it doesn't want to slip around. So just move this forward. Keep pushing that stupid cone out of the way. And then, there we go. Trim that off. So I don't like my trailer wire to be all that far behind. I mean, I pretty much, I want it right about there. Um, just enough so I can get the hook through it. From there, I got my length set, and I tie that on. Boom, get that wrapped down. Um, all the way down, boom. Keep that nice and straight, good and secure. Wrap back forward. Consistent thread tension will keep that tight, so you don't have to worry about glue or anything, fold it back over. And if you do this, if you have good thread tension and you double that back over, to me, there's absolutely no reason that you would ever have to glue this. Um, I have never seen one come loose. So just give that a good cinch down. Okay, whip finish that off because now we're gonna go back to the, the trailer hook. Just give that a trim. Now, for me, so this is a, that's the OPST trailer hook. Um, I just feed that through. So I go underneath the hook from the underside of the eye. And then all you have to do, pull that up, bring that over. For you guys who've been doing these flies for a long time, you've seen it rigged like this. Um, but I'm gonna show everybody just because you gotta be able to do it. So then you just pull that tight and it creates that nice little connection there. Um, so I got it here and the hook's riding up, which is the way I like it. I like, I like my hooks to ride 
well, I like my hooks dried up, but um, so we're going to do it that way. So I'm going to tie on. I'm going to take the olive here and cut whatever section you want out of it. Um, remember, it's going to be about yay long. So I'm going to cut, I don't know, five, six inches of it. Okay. Um, and remember, this is directional. It has a flow to it. So we got to tie it in with the flow. Um, so let's get this thread base on there. So this doesn't slip around. The rear portion of this fly is just mega easy. So don't worry um, about that. I want this on mine. I only want it, you know, just a little bit past the hook, maybe a half an inch. Okay. So I just pull back all this stuff that I don't want. You can wet your fingers. It really helps get it out of the way. I don't want to trap any fibers. I want it to secure it to that leather at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So I got it like that. Got it where I want it. One. Make sure that that stays facing up. Boom. One, two, three. You're secured. Fold this back. Wrap forward. One, two, three, four, five. Just get that nice and secured down there. It's all we're doing on that. Rear section is finished. Um, this kind of gets in the way of the whip finish a little bit, but come in there, boom. Come in underneath, boom. One more. Three wraps on the whip finish should be all you need. Done. Okay, so that's that section of the fly. Really easy. Now we move to the body, the main portion of it. Um, again, this is really easy. This is this fly is just a stinking easy fly to tie. Um, so we're going to figure this out. I know how much it's back there. And we want don't want this to be super tight. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it even and then just relax it a little bit. And that's where I'm tying that in. At. Okay. I'm going to tie it in there and I'm going to tie it in, I don't know, about a third of the way from the back of the shank. Wet your fingers, make sure you don't trap any fibers. Okay. Let's get that on there and get my thread going back on here again. Pull that up. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Okay, wet my fingers. There we go. Okay, so I got my distance there. And got those fibers separated wrap one two three that's secure okay I don't need to do a whole bunch of wraps I'm gonna run this forward two. because now we are going to wrap this around this way so now we're basically creating a hackle with the rabbit strip Okay, boom, let's wrap it forward. That use that leather to engage it and just one in front of the other. Okay. Come forward, wrap forward. We're gonna use this and just butt it up underneath that cone head and it's gonna keep that cone secure. Boom, let's wrap it up. So it looked like we started with a whole bunch more than we needed with this rabbit, didn't it? So, okay, I got that right there. It was secured in place. One. 
two, three. Cut that off. Okay. Now I'm going to take my scissors, you can take a bodkin, and just push that all underneath the cone. Okay. Now, you could absolutely fish this fly just like this. Okay. It's going to have tons of wiggle, tons of movement. I, you could add flash to it. You could do whatever you want. Um, I tend not to do a whole lot of flash in my flies, and if I do, it's one or two pieces. Um, but with this fly, I don't really feel like I want to do any flash. Um, if you do, you're just going to run maybe a piece of flash taboo down the sides. That's what the pattern calls for, is um, two strips of flash taboo on each side. I'm not going to do that because I don't like that on this fly. And I think this is going to give me my look that I want. So for this, all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of belly to this and just add some color variation. Um, bait fish, this is going to imitate like a sculpin pattern or something like that in the water. Um, bait fish ha usually have a brighter belly. So um, I'm using that dark olive and black for the top and just use this orange and yellow and it's just going to provide a nice little bit of color variation on the bottom. So I'm going to trim this down to a point. Okay, to just make it tie in a little bit nicer, I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to come in underneath, and just kind of use that, wrap it in, boom, one, two, three, okay, use those scissors, push that little piece of leather underneath there. Now that's going to hold that cone in place, make it super secure. There we go. Now I don't feel a need because I got that stuff holding that cone in place. It's not going anywhere. So I don't feel a need to come out in front and do anything. I know some people do that. I will add um, some super glue or zap a gap underneath the head or underneath the cone, uh, cone head with all that stuff. And I'll just really make it super secure. I usually don't like super glue and I don't find it necessary most of the time. Um, but it does secure the cone head a little bit better. Um, so that's all there is to that. Now, this is obviously, I don't want it to be the same length. I want it to be an accent. I want it to be a belly. I tied it in long. Okay, I'm gauging the length of the fly. I'm gauging everything and I know where I want it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to separate the fibers with my scissors. I'm going to chop that off. Okay. So now what I have is a nice little Dalai Lama fly with color variation. Uh, dark on top, dark and olive with a little bit of yellow and just some orange underneath. This fly is going to be super effective for trout, bull trout, rainbow trout, brown trout, steelhead, um, fall steelhead in rivers where there's uh, maybe a heavy flow for the summer, or maybe a little dirty where you want a bigger pattern. This is going to be awesome. Um, really fishy pattern. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think.